Take two. Hello, my friends, and welcome to another lesson here at Seriously? English for Brazilians. My name is Josh Cashill. That's short for Joshua. I will be your guide in this lesson through the treacherous and angry morass that are prepositions. Three prepositions in particular, three crafty and smarty pants prepositions of place, in, on, and at. And I'm going to explain, as I do, as I like to do, in a comparative way. I want to show you where all of the confusion comes from when you compare it to Portuguese. Because you, as Brazilians, you're thinking in your mind in Portuguese a lot of the time. You don't deny it. Please, don't deny it because it's true. Not that there's anything wrong with that. But what happens when we do do that, we have a little thing called interference. The Portuguese grammar rules, usage rules, they interfere when we're producing English. And we get into all kinds of trouble. I actually want to reference a student of mine. I will not use a name to protect the innocence of this person. And this person, because he's a he, I'm not going to mess with pronouns. <laughs> and he never really got the rules for when you use in and on. What's the rule? I don't know. So what he's done, he's just made both of those into a single sound. Mm. So if he's talking about, I'm in the room, the book is in the table. So it's a great strategy to avoid making mistakes but at the same time, you don't really know what the rules are, and it might be helpful to do so. So we're going to take a look at some of the rules where the interference and confusion comes from Portuguese and how we can solve it. And the solution is not simple. Sorry. Because the solution requires that you memorize certain things, certain rules. But there, there's really no rhyme or reason to prepositions in English in, for the most part, but you may see a few uh, consistencies in tons of inconsistencies. But let's take a look first and now at the prepositions of place, in, on, and at. And where are we going to do this? We're going to do this na praia. That's all I'm going to say. A gente vai fazer isso na praia, okay? Because I'm not going to give it away. I'll see you in a sec. Okay, I'm actually pretty excited about this lesson because now you get to see my artistic skills in addition to my linguistic skills. And as you can see here, this is my rendition of the beach. <laughs> we have the sand here. We've got some umbrellas. And here's where the water meets the sand, this is the shore. That's what that's called. That's called the shore, the shoreline. And we have some waves here. And then I'm not sure what this is. This could be some, some kind of current going through here in the water. So it's a beautiful uh, picture of the beach. Now let's get to the prepositions. I'm going to write a few sentences in Portuguese. And then we're going to compare them in English. Okay? Let's try it out. So... Our first sentence, ontem estava na praia. Eu estava na praia. So we have this little preposition right there. That's the preposition. And that's actually a combination for you Portuguese speakers of uh, em, a, na. We're not here to look at Portuguese grammar. We're here to look at English grammar. But this has an effect. So, our next sentence is, let me get my pen, uh, estava na água quando, again, we have the preposition right here. Now, the third sentence, estava na água, quando, what? What happened to me? Uma onda, uma onda do mar caiu, caiu, 
na cachola. That would be my head. Caiu na minha cabeça. So we have three separate prepositions of place, but they're all the same in Portuguese. However, and this is where it's super, super cool and super, super confusing, all of these prepositions are different in English. This is where the confusion, how can you have three prepositions that are the exact same in Portuguese, but all three are different in English? That's it's how it is. Sorry, I apologize, but sad day for us. But that's how it is. So what we're going to see, we're going to look bit by bit, and then we're going to kind of uh, parse it out so we can understand what's going on. Okay? Hold on. Let's pretend that you... Let me draw a little person here. Um, let's pretend I'm, I'm here. Okay, this is me. I'm going to draw me. Yay! Here I am, na praia, and my uh, sunga is blue. <laughs> yes, I wear a sunga, and no one should ever see me wearing a sunga. Um, you should see the episode where uh, Homer, the Simpsons, come to Brazil, and they strut along the beach uh, in their, their sungas. I feel so European. That's kind of what it looks like. Well, there's me, okay? Someone calls me, and they want to know where I am. What do you tell them? Because in Portuguese, you can say, here, let's do it again. Let's change it up a bit. In Portuguese, where are we? Hey, cadê você? Estou na praia. Okay, and we have our preposition here. Where are you? This... First preposition, we're talking about a location in general or a point somewhere in space, okay? Now, we're talking about the beach. It's a location. So, where are you? Where am I? Estou na praia. Let's look at that in English. Let's put it in red here. Estou. I am the beach. I am where? I am at the beach. At, this is our first preposition. At, we use to talk about locations in general. I am at the beach. I am at work. I am at home. I am at the mall. I am at the gym. I am, where else can I be? I am at... The airport, ready to fly, ready to travel somewhere. I am at my house in Buzush that I dream about every morning before I wake up, that I wish I had, that I don't. So all of these different locations, we use at, a, a point uh, in space, a, a general location. Okay? So if we look at this picture, where am I here? Yay! Let's... Get me there. Whoa, whoa. That's an awesome picture. Where am I? In relation to the beach, I am at the beach. Not too hard. Now, if I had a picture of a shopping mall behind me, I would be at the mall. If I had a picture of an office space with desks and cubicles and chairs, I would be at work, at the office. General location, a point in space. Okay? That's our first preposition. At. Okay, so now I have left the sand. I'm hot, I'm sweaty, I need to cool off. Where do I go? Well, now, here you can see me. Look where I am. Hello! Yay! Where am I in relation to the water? This is our second preposition. Remember, eu estava na água. Now, someone calls me on my cell phone, and I answer, Hey, estou na água. Estou na água. So, again, here's our preposition, em a água. What do we have in English? I am the water. Where am I? I am 
in the water. In no sentido de dentro. I am surrounded by something. There are limits to where I can go. And when we're talking about in, we are talking about being inside of something, being enclosed by something. Those limits, the enclosure can be physical, like the water, but they can also be amorphic. They can be metaphorical. They don't have to be uh, physical limits. For example, um, in the universe, the universe is infinite. We are in a, in a galaxy in the universe. Also, this is really interesting, and Brazilians have a lot of trouble with this. Eu moro no Rio de Janeiro. I live in Rio de Janeiro. Where in Rio de Janeiro? I live in the South Zone. Where in the South Zone? I live in Ipanema. Where in Ipanema? I won't tell you. But I live in Ipanema, in the South Zone, in the city of Rio de Janeiro, in the state of Rio de Janeiro, in the country of Brazil, in the western and southern hemispheres. What about the planet? Ah, that's a different preposition. But for all those others, we have in. We have some kind of physical or amorphic uh, metaphorical boundary that keeps us inside. So here we can see me in the water. And am I alone in the water? Am I by myself? My greatest fear, I believe. Let me see if I can draw this anatomically. Yeah. This is my greatest fear. Sharks. Don't tell my son. I want him to grow up to be a surfer and enjoy the water. But I'm terrified. Ever since that movie, Jaws, came out, 1977, I believe it was, or earlier? I can't go in the water. Terrified. Okay, so now we have two prepositions, in and at. That leaves us with only one preposition left. Let's take a look. So, our third example, let me draw me again. Here I am in the water, in the water, at the beach, in the water. I'm having a wonderful time splashing around, causing... Uh, a ruckus and a general, well, kerfuffle here at the beach. And remember, our third example was, eu estava na água, I was in the water, quando uma onda caiu na minha cabeça. So I will interpret this here. Here is the wave. Falling. Let me put this sentence. A onda caiu na minha cachola, cabeça, cabeça. Here is our preposition, na minha cabeça. So this wave fell where? Fell on my head. Now, here is our third and final preposition of place. And here is my head, right here, you can see in this video. And when the wave came, it fell on my head, on the surface of my head. And this is what we have to think about. We're talking about na superficie. I can draw another picture. Let me see here. Let's make it a yellow. And uh, it's not a submarine, but it's a boat, all right? Here's our little boat. It's called the Orca, another reference. And here I am, I am on this boat. I am on the boat, I am the, I'm on the surface of the boat. And where is this boat in relation to the water? Well, it's in the water. And where are we, where are we in relation to the beach? We are at the beach, in the water, on a boat. Now, keep in mind, when we use the preposition on, we are talking about something touching, in some way, the surface of something else. So, the, the most ubiquitous example. The book is on the table. It's touching the surface of the table. So, let's, if we take the table and we put it vertical like this, now we can say the picture. The picture 
is on, or the painting is on the wall. We have this idea of, uh, of on the surface of. Let's take a book, for example. The words in relation to the page. The ink is literally on the page. The words are on the page, on the surface of the page. And where are the words in relation to the book? When we close that book, those words can't escape. They are in the book, on the page. So we have a, a basic idea of what's going on. There are, are going to be some exceptions to this. I'm not going to get into that right now. I wanted to have some fun drawing and show you some basic outline to these three prepositions. And we can follow this in our day-to-day our, our -day, uh, interactions with, uh, with English. We can try to use it. We can try to expand on it. And in other lessons, I'm going to show you other more specific cases. Okay? We'll see in, on, and at uh, for time. We'll look at all kinds of other prepositions, and I'll make your head explode. Okay? So, before I go, I want to thank you. I hope you've enjoyed it. Uh, this lesson. I, have, I hope you have enjoyed my drawings, and I will see you in our next lesson. All right? Cheers. Bye-bye. And before we go, remember how I talked about the preposition of in Rio, in Brazil, in the Southern Hemisphere, in the Western Hemisphere, but in relation to our planet, there's me on our beautiful green-blue planet, where am I in relation to that planet? Spinning in the giant infinite universe. Where am I? Well, you know what? I'll tell you where I am. I'll tell you where we are. We all live on Earth. So, I've even used our own planet to make the preposition. How awesome is that? I'm going to stop it when I know our planet doesn't rotate like that. But let's see if I can stop it here. There we go. And... Seriously? Well, before I go, I wanted to tell you about the preposition in relation to our planet. I, ta I talked to you about how we live in Brazil. I live in Rio, in the south zone, in Ipanema, in the state of Brazil, or in the state of Rio, in the country of Brazil, in the, no the southern hemisphere, in the western hemisphere. But where are we in relation to our beautiful, round, blue and green planet, well, this is where we are. We all live on Earth. To round out our amazing lesson on prepositions of place, in, at, and on, I bid you farewell. And I'll see you in our next lesson. Cheers. Bye-bye.